Well, hey there, first grade. It's Mrs. Arbini. Happy last week of school. Can you believe this? It's our last Tuesday together. It seems impossible. But I'm excited to share with you the next chapter in Ramona the Brave. We're on chapter nine, Mr. Quimby's Spunky Gal. And it will be the last chapter in this book, but I will say the chapter is extremely long. So I will break it up, but we'll get the whole book in before the end of the school year. And that makes me happy because I would hate to leave a book unfinished. So we're going to read Mr. Quimby's Spunky Gal. Do you know what it means to be spunky? Kind of just, you know, you have a lot of life in you. Uh, you don't take anything lying down. You kind of fight for yourself a little bit. You have a bit of a spark. So he, she's a spunky gal. Filled with spirit and pluck, Ramona started off to school with her lunchbox in her hand. She was determined that today would be different. She would make it different. She was her father's funky gal, wasn't she? She twirled around for the pleasure of making her pleated skirt stand out beneath her car coat. Ramona was so filled with spunk, she decided to go to school a different way, by the next street over, something she'd always wanted to do. The distance to Glenwood School was no greater. There was no reason she should not go to school any way she pleased, as long as she looked both ways before she crossed the street and did not talk to strangers. Slowpoke Howie, half a block behind, called out when he saw her turn the corner. Ramona, where are you going? I'm going to school a different way, Ramona called, certain that Howie would not follow to spoil her feeling of adventure. Howie was not a boy to change his ways. Ramona skipped happily down the street, singing to herself, Hippity hop to the barber shop to buy a stick of candy, one for you and one for me and one for Sister Mandy. The sky through the bare branches overhead was clear. The air was crisp, and Ramona's feet in their brown oxfords felt light. Beezus's old boots, which so often weighed her down, were home in the hall closet. Ramona was happy. The day felt different already. Ramona turned the second corner, and as she hippity-hopped down the unfamiliar street, past three white houses and a tan stucco house, she enjoyed a feeling of freedom and adventure. Then as she passed a gray shingle house in the middle of a block, a lar uh, I'm sorry, a large German shepherd dog, license tags jingling, darted down the driveway toward her. Terrified, Ramona stood rooted to the sidewalk. She felt as if her bad dream had come true. The grass was green, the sky was blue, she could not move, she could not scream. The dog, head thrust forward, came close. He snipped with his black nose. Here was a stranger. He growled. This was his territory, and he did not want a stranger to trespass. This is not a dream, Ramona told herself. This is real. My feet will move if I make them. Go away, she ordered, backing away from the dog, which answered with a sharp bark. He had teeth like the wolf in the Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, grandmother, what big teeth you have. The better to eat you with, my dear. Ramona took another step back, growling. The dog advanced. He was a dog, not a wolf, but that was bad enough. Ramona used the only weapon she had, her lunchbox. She slung her lunchbox at the dog and missed. The box crashed to the sidewalk, tumbled, and came to rest. The dog stopped to sniff it. Ramona forced her feet to move, to run. Her oxfords pounded on the sidewalk. One shoelace came untied and slapped against her ankle. She looked desperately at a passing car, but the driver did not notice her peril. Ramona cast a terrified look over her shoulder. The dog had lost interest in her unopened lunchbox and was coming toward her again. She could hear his toenails on the sidewalk and could hear him growling deep in his throat. She had to do something, but what? Ramona's heart was pounding in her ears as she stopped to reach for the only weapon left, her shoe. She had no choice. She yanked off her brown oxford and hurled it at the dog. Again, she missed. The dog stopped, sniffed the shoe, and then to Ramona's horror, picked it up and trotted off in the direction from which he had come. Ramona stood aghast with the cold from the concrete sidewalk seeping through her sock. Now what should she do? If she said, you come back here, the dog might obey. And she didn't want him any closer. She watched helplessly as he returned to his own lawn, where he settled down with the shoe between his paws like a bone. He began to gnaw. Her shoe. There was no way Ramona could take her shoe away from the dog by herself. There was no one she could ask for help on the street of strangers, and her blue lunchbox, now dented, lying there on the sidewalk. Did she dare try to get it back while the dog was busy chewing her shoe? She took a cautious step toward her lunchbox, and the dog went on gnawing. She took another step. I really am brave, she told herself. 
The dog looked up. Ramona froze. The dog began to gnaw again. She darted forward, grabbed her lunch box, and ran toward school. Slap, pat, slap, pat on the cold concrete. Ramona refused to cry. She was brave, wasn't she? But she was worried. Mrs. Griggs frowned on tardiness, and Ramona was quite sure she expected everyone in her class to wear two shoes. Ramona would probably catch it from Mrs. Briggs at school and from her mother at home for losing a shoe with a lot of wear left in it. Ramona was always catching it. When Ramona reached Glenwood School, the bell had rung and the traffic boys were leaving their posts. The children crowding into the building did not notice Ramona's predicament. Ramona slapped padded down the hall to room one, where she quickly left her lunchbox and car coat in the cloakroom before she sat down at her desk with one foot folded under her. She spread her pleated skirt to hide her dirty sock. Susan, Susan noticed. What happened to your other shoe? She asked. I lost it and don't you tell. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I lost my place. If Susan told, Ramona would have a good excuse to pull Susan's boing boing curls. I won't, promised Susan, pleased to share a secret. But how are you going to keep Mrs. Griggs from finding out? Ramona cast a desperate look at Susan. I don't know, she confessed. Class, said Mrs. Griggs in a calm voice. This was her way of saying, all right, everyone, quiet down and come to order because we have work to do, and we won't accomplish anything if we waste time talking to one another. Ramona tried to warm her cold foot by rubbing it through her pleated skirt. Mrs. Griggs looked around her classroom. Who has not had a turn reading the flag salute, she asked. Ramona stared at her desk while trying not to shrink so small that Mrs. Griggs couldn't see her. Ramona, you have not had a turn, said Mrs. Griggs with a smile. You may come to the front of the room. Ramona and Susan exchanged a look. Ramona said, oh, now what am I going to do? Susan said, I feel sorry for you. Ramona, we're waiting, said Mrs. Griggs. There was no escape. Ramona slid from her seat and walked to the front of the room where she faced the flag and stood on one foot like a stork to hide her shoeless foot behind her pleated skirt. I pledge allegiance, she began swaying. I pledge allegiance, said the class. Mrs. Griggs interrupted. Uh, both feet on the floor, Ramona. Ramona felt a surge of defiance. Mrs. Griggs wanted two feet on the floor, so she put two feet on the floor. To the flag, she continued with such determination that Mrs. Griggs did not have another chance to interrupt. When Ramona finished, she took her seat. So there, Mrs. Griggs was her spunky thought. What if I am only wearing one shoe? Ramona, what happened to your other shoe? asked Mrs. Griggs. I lost it, answered Ramona. Tell me about it, said Mrs. Griggs. Ramona did not want to tell. I was chased by a... She wanted to say a gorilla, but after a moment's hesitation, she said, Dog, and I had to throw my shoe at him, and he ran off with it. She expected the class to laugh, but instead they listened in silent sympathy. They did not understand about a hole in a house, but they understood about big dogs. They, too, had faced big dogs and been frightened. Ramona felt better. So Ramona's lost her shoe. She's had a showdown with a big dog. She walked down the wrong street on purpose to get to school. And now her whole day is just a mess. So Mrs. Griggs has caught her with the one shoe. And Ramona has told her the truth about what happened. So now we have to read to find out what's going to happen next to Ramona. All right, guys. I will see you tomorrow for your final Wednesday of your first grade school year. Okay? Have a great day. No, Tuesday. No, Wednesday. Wednesday's right. I need the school year to be over. Bye, guys.